My name is Monash. I'm 17. I go to Manorewa High and uh, I have a very great interest in the aviation industry. Well, you're in the right place, Monish, because the Air Force has a range of jobs for anyone interested in aircraft. And leading aircraft man Chris Anker is going to show you the critical work done by avionics engineers. Basically, what we're going to do today mm -hmm. is uh, take you through a couple of the instruments on the aircraft, yeah. show you what we do as avionics, mm -hmm. and uh, then we're going to shoot back to the bay and try and fix them. Okay, so let's have a wee look. Yep. All right, mate. This is the uh, flight deck of our uh, C-130 Hercules. Basically all these gauges, uh, what we look after is avionics. We've got uh, fuel gauges, pressure gauges, various things like that. It's such an important trade because if anything were to go wrong, it's the safety of all the people in, on that plane that falls on our shoulders. So if, if we do something wrong and the plane crashes, that's a huge deal. We're, if something doesn't get right, done right, there's, there's potential yeah, for those, those people to there's the potential for loss of life. It's, it's quite literally that important. Squadron based technicians identify faults with equipment and send them back to the bay to be fixed. And Monish is going to have to fix an HSI unit. This is the glide slope indicator. And what that tells the pilot is when it's uh, coming in for a landing, it's the ideal angle for the aircraft to be approaching at in order to make a very successful landing. And what happens when this flag displays itself is telling the pilot that that information being received into the, the instrument is unreliable. Right, we'll get you to fire it up. That's those two switches there. Okay. If you just flick those, what should happen is all the flags should go away. Okay, and as you can see, the glide slope flag is yep. still shown. And after confirming the fault, they have to identify the cause. Okay. Oh, look at that. You see there's a loose wire. Yes. That's probably what's causing our problem. A good avionics person should be have a good eye for detail, have a, a good interest in electronics, and be interested in, in planes in general. Patience is a, is a big key factor. You need to be able to keep cool head and nut it out. So if you want to flip the power back on. Yep. And the flag goes away. Nice right. work. There's fixing those HSI, it's great. In the Air Force, Smoko is called Joe, and it's a perfect time for Monish to relax and have some fun with the other avionics staff. <laughs> I think it's a lot different to what it's commonly perceived to be. But I, the impression that I got as, as military when I, before I joined up was that it's all just marching around and, and doing disciplinary type of stuff. It's, and the reality is quite different. But they are soon back to work as Chris introduces Monish to the P3K Orion, which carries some serious avionics hardware. It's a maritime patrol vessel and used primarily for such rescue type operations. It uses the uh, infrared turret here, also the radar and a couple other boxes on the plane in order to try and locate people while they're in the water. So this is the tech rail. Each one of these stations is um, some, uh, an operator city yeah. and they control different parts of the aircraft. The infrared electro-optic turret is a highly specialised piece of equipment and Corporal Karim Aldara is going to show Monish how it works. It's the colour and stuff um, like that. You can use that button there, yeah. it okay, swaps between the cameras. The turret is gyro-stabilised and can track moving objects automatically with the help of special software. So they don't need to twist? No, no, they're all looking at they're all looking at the same thing at the same time. Inside the turret, there is a colour daylight camera, a high zoom spotter camera, and an infrared one as well. Yep. And then, yeah, and then you can zoom in with the with the other button in there. I'll show you some of the things the system can do. Just should be able to pick this up. The infrared camera sees heat and turns it into an image, which makes spotting a warm-bodied person against the cold ocean much easier. Okay, Manish, here we are at the, uh, the radar bay. This is um, the same radar that we looked at on the P3 before. Yeah. It's um, radar stands for radio detection and ranging. Basically what it does is it'll send out a pulse, and that pulse will then reflect off objects in the distance and then come back to the receiver. Basically what that does is it'll paint a picture of the terrain or the, uh, the weather, depending on what the, the radar is tuned to. But this particular radar, it has a bit of a fault with it. This survey just here, mm -hmm. it's uh, gone kaput. For, 
<laughs> and we need to change it. The servo spins the radar at 150 revolutions per minute, but this one's not going anywhere. There you go. As you can see, it's not moving. So that's our fault confirmed. Now what we need to do is fire down the power and change that servo. When it's working, the radar can emit 2,000 pulses a second, revealing a phenomenal amount of detail from the surrounding world. Okay, we'll pop that on the bench over here. Now we have a, uh, a serviceable one from stores, mm -hmm. and we're going to open this up. That's all right. Yep. And that needs to go back where the other one was. So with all Monish's careful attention to detail, will his radar repair get things spinning again? Look at that. Nice work. I think he'd make a great idea of this technician. He's, he seems to have the, the discipline down, he's um, focused, uh, seems to have the right attributes for the train. Yeah. With the radar fixed and installed, the Orion is on to its next mission. So how has Monish found his time in avionics? Definitely my favourite part would be fixing up the HSI unit and that was fun because it was really ticky and finding the fault for it and soldering it and doing it by hand, it was really great. Avionics engineers need to be accurate, patient, effective and be able to follow instructions. They should be practical and logical in their work with good hand-eye coordination, normal colour vision and must be comfortable working in confined spaces. Three years of secondary education in English, Maths and Science is needed before starting training and previous experience in electronics or electrical work is useful as is experience as a mechanic.